The moon had always captivated humanity, a celestial beacon of mystery and wonder. But for a small group of accidental explorers, it became something far more tangible and terrifying. In the year 2087, five curious humans landed on the moon as part of an experimental mining expedition. They were not astronauts by training, but rather contractors, working with Lunar Prospectors Inc. to analyze potential resources. Among them was Dr. Aaron Blake, a geologist, alongside a small team of engineers and technicians who had been handpicked for their expertise. Their mission was simple, survey the moon's surface for valuable minerals and report back. But when they stumbled upon a vast hidden hatch buried beneath a thin layer of regolith, their lives were irrevocably changed. We're not supposed to be here, muttered Blake as he cautiously approached the hatch, its metallic surface gleaming in the harsh lunar light. The hatch had no visible handles or mechanisms, but when one of the engineers, Sarah Kaufman, touched it, the metal slid open with an eerie hiss. A crimson light bathed the team as they peered down what seemed to be a long, spiraling corridor, descending into the depths of the moon. Should we go in? asked Kaufman. Blake hesitated, then nodded. We've come this far. The team descended cautiously, their boots clanging against the metal steps. The corridor opened into a cavernous chamber, bustling with activity. Hundreds of beings, some humanoid, others bizarrely alien, moved with purpose, their voices a cacophony of languages and sounds. Dr. Blake and his team froze in awe, realizing they had stumbled upon an underground city. What struck them most was the seamless blend of technology and architecture. The walls pulsed with energy, illuminating the chamber in a soft blue glow. Before they could process the sight, a slender, gray-skinned alien with large, almond-shaped eyes approached them. Designation? It asked in a melodic tone. Blake glanced at his team nervously. Uh, we're new hires, from Earth. The alien studied them for a moment before nodding. Welcome. Let me guide you through orientation. They exchanged glances but followed obediently. The alien led them through a maze of corridors and chambers, explaining the various duties and protocols. They learned that the moon was not a natural satellite, but a colossal base constructed millennia ago by a coalition of alien races known as the Zakor Alliance. The base was disguised to appear as the moon humans knew, thanks to advanced holographic technology. The Z Corps had been monitoring Earth for centuries, ensuring their presence remained hidden while subtly influencing global politics and technological advancements. The gray-skinned alien who introduced himself as Zareth explained that the base was managed by the Thrixians, a brutish reptilian species known for their ruthless efficiency. The Thrixians oversaw the operations, while other alien races, including Zareth's own species, the Greys, served in various technical and administrative roles. After a few days of pretending to blend in, Dr. Blake and his team discovered the grim reality of life on the moon base. The Thrixians maintained strict control, enforcing harsh working conditions with little regard for safety or well-being. Airlock leaks, hazardous equipment, and lack of protective gear were common issues, but anyone who dared to complain faced immediate punishment. Zareth became their ally, secretly sharing information about the Thrixians' oppressive regime. He spoke of the Greys' desire for change, but lamented their inability to stand up to the reptilian overlords. We've tried to organize before, Zarath confided one evening in a dimly lit storage bay, but the Thrixians are ruthless. Anyone who speaks out disappears. Dr. Blake listened carefully, his mind racing. What if we could change that? Zareth's eyes widened. You're human. You have no power here. But we have something the Thrixians don't, Blake countered. We're not afraid of them. Over the next few weeks, Blake and his team worked tirelessly, gaining the trust of the Greys and other oppressed species on the base. They learned that the Thrixians maintained control through a combination of fear and technological superiority. Their command center was heavily guarded, but if someone could infiltrate it and disable their surveillance systems, the workers might have a chance to rise up. The plan was simple but dangerous. 
Kaufman would lead a small team to infiltrate the command center, using her engineering expertise to disable the security systems. Meanwhile, Blake and Zerath would rally the workers, preparing them for a coordinated uprising. On the eve of the uprising, tension filled the dimly lit corridors of the moon base. Blake stood with Zerath in a shadowed alcove, watching as Kaufman and her team slipped toward the command center. The engineers were disguised in standard-issue uniforms, their faces hidden beneath visors. Zerath placed a slender gray hand on Blake's shoulder. Are you sure this will work? It has to, Blake replied, steeling himself. We've come too far to fail now. Minutes later, Kaufman's voice crackled through their earpieces. We're in position, disabling the surveillance systems now. The command center was a labyrinth of panels, controls, and flashing lights, guarded by two towering Thrixians. The engineers moved swiftly and silently, subduing the guards before they could raise the alarm. Kaufman's fingers flew across a control panel, bypassing security protocols with ease. Surveillance systems are down, she reported. Blake turned to Zerath with a grim smile. It's time. The Greys and other workers had gathered in the main assembly hall, a cavernous chamber capable of holding thousands. Blake took to the makeshift stage and addressed the crowd. My friends, today we stand united against our oppressors. No longer will we suffer under the Thrixians' rule. Together we will reclaim our freedom. A cheer rose from the crowd, echoing off the metallic walls. Greys, insectoid Zarnix, and even a few Voltrons raised their voices in unison. For the first time in years, hope flickered in their eyes. As the workers began their assault on the Thrixian outposts, Kaufman and her team continued their work in the command center. They hacked into the central control system, seeking to disable the base's automated defenses. Something's not right, muttered Kaufman, her brow furrowing. These controls, they're not directly connected to anything. What do you mean? asked one of the engineers. Kaufman's eyes widened as she realized the truth. The Thrixians aren't here. They're just holograms. At that moment, the control panel flickered, and a deep, guttural voice filled the chamber. Unauthorized access detected. Initiating base self-destruct sequence. Alarms blared and the lights turned a menacing shade of red. The floor vibrated beneath their feet as the countdown began. T minus 15 minutes. Kaufman frantically scanned the controls, searching for a way to abort the sequence. We've got to stop this. Blake's voice crackled through the earpiece. What's happening? We've triggered a self-destruct. The Thrixians weren't even here. They've been controlling everything remotely. Blake's heart pounded in his chest. How long do we have? Fifteen minutes. Blake turned to Zerath. We need to evacuate, get as many people to the surface as possible. Zerath nodded and began shouting orders to the workers. Panic spread through the assembly hall as they scrambled toward the exits. The corridors became a frenzied maze of bodies, all racing against time. Blake and Zerath made their way to the command center, where Kaufman was desperately trying to override the self-destruct sequence. Any luck? Blake asked. None, she replied, sweat beating on her forehead. I can't access the core systems. The entire place is going to blow. Blake looked at the countdown. T minus ten minutes. What happens if the moon explodes? He asked, already dreading the answer. Zerath's eyes dimmed. The gravitational imbalance would devastate Earth. Tides would change. Ecosystems would collapse. Billions could die. Blake swallowed hard. We can't let that happen. Is there any way to stabilize the base? Zerath pondered for a moment. The moon's core contains a massive singularity generator. If we can divert its energy, we might be able to prevent a catastrophic explosion. Kaufman's eyes lit up. I can reroute the generator's power but we'll need to access the core directly. With less than ten minutes remaining, the team raced to the moon's core, a towering chamber housing the singularity generator. The air crackled with energy as they approached the control console. Kaufman quickly assessed the system. I can divert the power, but it'll require a constant manual input. Blake placed a hand on her shoulder. Do it. 
As Kaufman worked, Zerath monitored the countdown. T minus five minutes. Sweat poured down Kaufman's face as she frantically rerouted the singularity generator's power, her fingers dancing across the control console. The countdown timer blinked ominously in the corner of her vision. T minus four minutes. Blake stood beside her, keeping a steady eye on the fluctuating energy readings. We're running out of time. Kaufman muttered under her breath. Almost there. The control panel blinked and the singularity generator hummed to life, its energy output visibly changing course. The countdown paused for a moment before resuming with renewed urgency. T minus three minutes. Zerath stepped forward, his gray features drawn with worry. It's not enough. We need more power. Blake glanced at the core, realizing what had to be done. We can't divert the energy without a stabilizer. Kaufman shook her head. There's no stabilizer here. Without one, we need someone to manually guide the energy flow. Zerath's eyes met Blake's, and in that moment, they both understood. I'll do it, said Zerath. No, you can't protested Kaufman. The energy levels will kill you. Zareth placed a hand on Kaufman's shoulder. I am already dead if I do nothing, but if I can save my people and your world, then my death will have meaning. Blake nodded solemnly. Thank you. Zareth stepped into the containment chamber, his slender frame bathed in the glow of the singularity generator. Outside, Kaufman readied the manual controls, her fingers trembling. T minus two minutes. Zareth, are you ready? Blake called. Yes, came the reply, calm and unwavering. Kaufman activated the energy diversion, sending a surge of raw power into the containment chamber. Zareth's body convulsed as he guided the energy flow, diverting it away from the self-destruct sequence and back into the generator. T minus one minute. The energy level stabilized and the countdown halted at T minus 30 seconds. The generator pulsed with energy and the moon base trembled but held steady. Blake and Kaufman watched in silence as Zerath's form began to dissolve, his body consumed by the immense energy. With a final ethereal glow, Zerath vanished, leaving only a faint shimmer in the air. The countdown display blinked once before fading entirely. The alarm stopped, and the moon base fell silent. The escape to the surface was harrowing, but the humans and aliens finally emerged onto the lunar plains, their eyes adjusting to the harsh sunlight. They looked back at the moon base, which now lay dormant beneath the regolith. And the Kaufman wiped a tear from her cheek as she turned to Blake. He saved us. Blake nodded. And now it's our turn to honor his sacrifice. The humans returned to Earth with the surviving greys and other workers, revealing the truth about the moon base and the Thrixians' control. The world was stunned, but rather than panic, humanity rallied. Governments opened their borders to the alien refugees, and a new era of cooperation began. The Thrixians attempted to reassert control, but their holographic illusions were exposed and their influence crumbled. The greys and other oppressed species united with humanity sharing their advanced technology to build a new, more equitable world. A year after the uprising, a monument was erected on the moon in Zareth's honor. It stood as a symbol of unity and sacrifice, a testament to the bond forged between humans and aliens in the depths of the lunar base. Blake and Kaufman continued their work, leading joint efforts between Earth and their new extraterrestrial allies. They oversaw the construction of a new lunar colony, one dedicated not to control or secrecy, but to exploration and understanding. In a press conference at the newly established Lunar Unity Base, Blake addressed a crowd of humans and aliens alike. We stand here today on the surface of the moon, a place that once symbolized mystery and fear, now a beacon of hope and cooperation. Together, we have shown that even in the darkest of times, Unity and courage can guide us toward a brighter future. Kaufman stepped beside him, holding a small holographic projector. She activated it, and Zarath's visage appeared, his serene expression looking out over the crowd. May we remember those who sacrifice for our freedom, said Kaufman, her voice steady, 
and may we continue their legacy, working together for a better tomorrow. The crowd erupted in applause, the cheers of humans mingling with the harmonious hums, clicks, and whistles of the aliens. As Blake looked out over the diverse assembly, he knew that the road ahead would not be easy, but at least they had new friends and a bright future, for this was the very thing that the galaxy cabal was afraid of.